Hello and welcome to the Photography and Videography channel. I'm Nigel Cooper and today I'm taking a look at the all new Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone system. The Wireless Go 2 is the second iteration of Rode's ever popular wireless mic system. The original Wireless Go came out in late 2019 and became an instant hit due to its lightweight, compact size, ease of use and affordability. So what's new in version 2? Well there's the price. This new model comes in at around £279 compared to the first generation which was £179, making this new one about £100 more. However, the all new dual receiver is now accompanied by two transmitters instead of just the one and there are a whole host of cool new features that make this latest version well worth the extra money. Having an extra transmitter means that two presenters can talk to camera at the same time and the new dual receiver has the ability to mix the audio from the two transmitters down onto a single track or you can choose by holding down two buttons for three seconds for one to go to the left channel and the other to go to the right channel. The Wireless Go 2 also comes with three furry windshields that have an improved design over the original. They now twist on bayonet style rather than just pushing on so they no longer fall off during use. You also get three USB-C to USB-A cables for charging the receiver and two transmitters all at the same time, a carry pouch and a TRS to TRS cable for attaching the receiver to your camera via the 3.5mm jack. However, if you shoot video on your iPhone and it only has a lightning socket, you can purchase the optional Rode SC15 which is a 300mm USB-C to iOS lightning cable that enables you to connect the receiver via its digital USB-C audio output to your iPhone via the lightning socket. This has two major advantages. If you have an older iPhone, such as a 6S for example, using the SC15 cable frees up the 3.5mm jack so you can use that for headphone monitoring. But most importantly, using the SC15 cable will yield better quality audio because when you go directly into the lightning socket of your iPhone, the preamp and analog to digital conversion work is carried out by the Rode receiver which has a superior quality AD converter and better preamps compared to the cheap nasty ones that are built into most mobile devices. Moreover, the AD converter and preamps built into cameras such as Panasonic's GH5 which I'm shooting this video on aren't exactly brilliant either and they won't match those that are built into the Rode receiver. Although the Rode Wireless Go 2 is a relatively inexpensive product you'll be surprised at the quality of the AD converter and preamps that are built into the receiver and they're more than capable of achieving professional results. This new road system also has an improved transmission with a longer range of 200 meters, that's line of sight of course, compared to 70 meters on the original version. Not that anybody ever found 70 meters limiting, but it's good to know that we have a ton of extra headroom in the range department. This new model also has Series 4 2.4 GHz digital transmission with 128-bit encryption that's optimised to be extremely stable in areas where there's a lot of RF activity, such as in the cities with lots of minicab offices or inside shopping centres for example. The new transmitters now also have an onboard recording facility that you can turn on and off via the Rode Central software. This can achieve over 24 hours of compressed audio or around seven hours of uncompressed onto the internal memory of the two transmitters, which means you no longer have to worry about audio dropout. The three-stage pad is now expandable to 10 stages, allowing for final adjustments, which makes achieving good gain staging into your camera much easier. It's also worth noting that it's important to set the gain stage correctly. Many Rode products, such as the Wireless Go 2, are designed to squeeze the best quality audio out of the camera. First, a little about gain staging and what it actually is. If you're an audiophile, you'll probably already know, but if you're not, here's a simple definition of gain staging. If I was to encapsulate gain staging in a single sentence, it would be something like this. Adjusting the audio levels at each point of amplification to achieve an optimal signal to noise ratio, preferably with more signal and less noise, with no excess noise on the noise floor and enough headroom to allow for transient spikes with no unwanted distortion. Basically, achieving good gain staging with a perfect signal to noise ratio in video means setting the output level of the transmitter so it's not too low that it's too close to the noise floor. With the Wireless Go 2 you can't go wrong as it's tuned up quite hot even at the lowest decibel pad setting, so you're not going to be able to set it so low to the noise floor that you'll get any unwanted audible hiss. 
You had to make sure of that, but back in the day with all the analog equipment, we had to be more considered. At the other end, you don't want the output level of the microphone transmitters to be too hot, meaning too high, that they cause distortion. And we all know that unlike analog distortion from the old days, digital distortion or digital clipping sounds really bad and it's something you definitely don't want. Then you've got to consider the recording device, in this case, the camera. Most budget cameras, and by budget I mean under £3,000, and especially DSLRs and mirrorless cameras with a simple 3.5mm mic jack input, as these only have cheap DA converters and preamps, which can be quite noisy. So if you set the input gain on the camera too high, you'll hear noise coming from the preamps. So the best way to achieve good gain staging and signal to noise ratio, in this instance, is to set the output level of the road transmitters as high as possible via the decibel pad and then turn the decibel input level of the camera down until the desired recording level is reached. Doing it this way means your camera's built-in preamps don't have to work overtime to get a decent audio signal in, hence better audio. I personally own a Panasonic GH5 and the quality of the preamps and the AD converter in that camera and most cameras in this price range are not what I'd exactly call high quality and when compared to the preamps in something like a high-end universal audio audio interface, the ones found in the GH5 are simply laughable. So Rode have designed their mics to be quite hot with a high output because they understand that by turning down the decibel levels in your camera while having the levels on the wireless go set quite high will yield better quality audio as the camera doesn't have to work as hard and the noise from the camera's built-in preamps won't be anywhere near as noticeable. The two transmitters that come with the Wireless Go 2 feature built-in omnidirectional condenser capsules, so there's no need for an additional lav mic. But both transmitters actually feature a 3.5mm TRS input if you so desire to use the lav mic instead of the built-in one. I found the built-in mic to be more than good enough for the kind of stuff I do, which is mainly YouTube videos and interviews. I was surprised by the quality of the audio that the built-in mic yielded. I also found the included furry windshields to do a surprisingly effective job of rejecting wind noise when shooting outdoors in windy conditions, especially now that they don't fall off anymore due to the new twist on bayonet mount. If you download the Rode Central software for desktop, link in the description below, you can plug in the receiver and transmitters into your computer to unlock some of the advanced features and set the system up for your personal preference as well as being able to access and export recordings from the transmitter's built-in memory. Via the Rode Central software, you can also switch on the safety channel, which records a backup track at minus 20 dB, just in case your main audio channel clips. You can also activate the mute lock feature to prevent accidentally muting the transmitters, as well as adjusting the fine gain setting to expand the free stage pad to 10 stages. Regarding the tech specs of the Wireless Go 2, the frequency range is 50Hz to 20kHz with a maximum sound pressure level for the mic of 100dB, so all very professional on those fronts. The transmitters weigh in at just 30 grams each, while the receiver is a tad more at 32, but basically about as light as you'll ever get. I took the new Wireless Go 2 across from my house where there's a cricket field and two football pitches to test the new 200m range to see how it fared up, and it passed with flying colours while the quoted battery life of 7 hours also proved to be relatively accurate. On just one charge, I did the testing for this review, shot two YouTube videos and carried out an interview, all of which took just over 5 hours of powered on time and there was still battery life to spare. Ok, so I'm just opposite my house and I'm going to test the Rode Wireless Go 2 range because it's now up to 200 metres, so I'm going to take a walk across this field and see how it fares up. I've got the um, transmitter on here and I've got the wind, uh, windshield on it because it's pretty windy today, so let's see how this goes. Okay, so I've now taken 175 steps across the park. Um, I can't get 200 yards because I've run out of space. This is where the fence is, but if this is picking me up, then I'm going to be pretty impressed. Okay, so I'm now walking back towards the camera. Again, it's windy out here. I've got the wind jammer on, but I do have wind of about 30 mile an hour today, so hopefully the wind jammer will be working okay. Very windy. I don't know how this is going to sound. Hopefully the wind jammer will be working okay. Okay, and now 
about four yards and about two yards away. Hopefully that worked. Okay, here's a couple of really quick tips regarding the transmitters that come with the Rode Wireless Go 2. As you can see, I'm wearing this one facing out. You can see the Rode logo, you can see the uh, lights on the side, and it's got this square reflective gloss surface, but don't feel obliged to wear it this way. You can, in fact, just turn it around. By doing that, it's more discreet because we just have this small matte black plastic clip. And because the microphone is facing outwards, it doesn't make any difference to the audio quality. Next, the actual clip on this microphone is the same size as a hot shoe or cord shoe on a camera. It's an industry standard cord shoe or hot shoe fitting. Rode have designed it this way so you can actually clip it onto a hot shoe of a camera. I still see people that clip this onto the strap of a camera or worse still, they just leave it dangling on the cable down the side. But you can actually just clip that onto a camera's hot shoe. Okay, so this is the Rode Central software that I've got on my iMac computer. So what I'm going to do first is using the included or one of the three included uh, USB cables, I'm first just going to plug in one of the actual transmitters here so you can see what actually happens. Now there's no recordings because this is a brand new set that I've only just taken delivery of, but all you can really do in here at this stage is click on this little cog up here and when you click this, it brings up a couple of options for you. This is where you can turn on or off the recording to the internal memory of the two transmitters. So when you turn these on, what it will do is it will actually record in like a loop. It will constantly record all the time and when the memory gets filled up, then it will start to record over the first recording. So when this is on, there's always a backup track going on there. And this is where you turn that on and off. Um, you've also got a mute lock. I'm going to actually turn this on because that will stop the presenter from accidentally muting the microphone. The only other information you've got in here is the battery percentage and then you've got the recording quality, a choice of compressed or uncompressed. And then you just have information for the clock, firmware and hardware. So that's pretty much it. That's um, all there is in here for the moment. Like I said, if the recording was turned on, this is where all your audio recordings would show up that you can just move over onto your computer. So now if I unplug that and plug in the actual receiver, uh, there's a few other options that you get here with the receiver. So in here, you've got a battery light on and off. When it's turned on, the backlight on the devices will go off after 10 seconds of inactivity to help with battery life. Um, you've got the gain mode here that goes from coarse to fine. And if you put it into fine, you just have finer increments here, as you can see, as you go through the pad. Whereas if you turn it to coarse, you simply have low, mid and high. So um, I'm just going to leave this one on coarse. Um, the next one is merged or split. When it's on split, if two presenters are speaking at the same time into the two transmitters, one will go to the right channel and one will go to the left channel. So when you're editing, it allows you to mix those two voices with more accuracy. When it's merged, both of the tracks will be merged down onto a single track. Now, this is the mode that you'd want it in if you're only using one of the transmitters because you would want the voice to go into both the left and right channel. Um, here we've got the safety channel on off. When it's turned on, it automatically records another audio channel to the internal memory at minus 20 dB, just in case your main audio clips. Um, also down here, you've got the battery indicator and the clock and firmware and hardware. And um, while these devices are plugged into the computer, they do actually charge at the same time. And that's indicated by a flashing blinking light on the transmitters. Finally, when you plug these devices, be it the transmitters or the receiver, into your computer via the USB cable, you don't have to turn them on first. As soon as you plug them in, there will be power going to them and Road Central will come up with the information here. I've personally owned the original Rode Wireless Go for a while now, and with this new version, I think Rode has gone from strength to strength by making the receiver a dual receiver affair while including two transmitters in with the kit. This, and all the other cool new features of the Wireless Go 2 make it a worthy upgrade. I'll put the usual links in the description below. I hope you found this video to be helpful and informative. I'm Nigel Cooper, and you've been watching the Photography and Videography channel. Thanks for stopping by, and as usual, I hope to see you again real soon.